According to ETS.org, the Test of English as a Foreign Language, or TOEFL, is the most widely respected English language exam in the world. The internet-based test introduced in 2006 is recognized by more than 9,000 colleges, universities, and agencies in more than 130 different countries. The website doesn't leave out that among those 130 countries, Australia, Canada, the UK, and the United States all use the exam. The purpose of TOEFL, as mentioned by ETS.org, is meant to measure one's English ability to determine if they could enter a university in an English-speaking nation. TOEFL claims that its scoring system is unique. Immigration departments use the scores to issue residential and work visas. Medical and licensing agencies use the scores for professional certification purposes. And individuals use them to measure their progress in English. The exam is divided into four sections, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Each section is worth 30 points. The total amount of points adds up to 120, and students are required to receive a minimal score of 90 to be qualified at a university English proficiency level. The reading section measures one's ability to understand academic passages written in English. There's a 20 minute time frame to read paragraphs and answer questions that TOEFL claims reflects one's ability and comprehension of English reading material. The listening section measures one's ability to understand conversations and lectures in English. In this section, you read one passage and then listen to a lecture. When you listen to the lecture, you are permitted to take notes. Then you answer questions relating to the reading and listening part. The speaking section in the test measures your ability to speak about a variety of topics. In this section, you are given a small amount of time to prepare an answer and then expect it to, under a minute or less, speak your answer as they relate to the question. The speaking section was perhaps implemented into the exam as a means to follow communicative language capabilities, which Brown notes is quite a challenge to create for such a test. The speaking section does, however, implement strategic competence, which Beckman and Palmer describe as the ability to the testee to employ, break down, or enhance rhetorical effect of evidence. Finally, the writing section, according to ETS, measures your ability to write in English at an academic English level. In fact, it may be argued that TOEFL is an exam of communicative language. Bachman and Palmer, 1996, state that in order for a particular language test to be useful for its intended purposes, test performance must correspond to demonstrable ways to language use in non-test situations. Brown defines a test as a method of measuring a person's ability, knowledge, or performance in a given domain. The domain, as Brown mentions, is just a sampling, and a sampling can supposedly measure a person's proficiency in the English language. With the evidence I have found from ETS, TOEFL does seem to measure a sample of one's English proficiency ability in all four language categories. But I'm interested in doing a sample myself. How well can a native English speaker who also happens to be an English teacher who is about to receive a master's degree in TESOL, hold up on a two-hour exam. I'm going to take a sample exam from testden.com. Let's see how I do. Let's go.
I failed the TOEFL exam. The practice one. Yeah, I failed it. Let's check out my results. Let's see. The target you want to have is about 90 out of 120. So it says, Vince, you have basic knowledge of English. Your English level is intermediate, but you require additional study and professional tutoring to improve to international standards. You need a minimum TOEFL score of 90 out of 120 to apply to USA, UK, and Canada universities. Now, given for this exam, I rushed through it. Now, there are certain variables that need to be considered. I rushed through the whole test and... Um, for the speaking part, I didn't take notes when they told me to listen carefully, and when I got to the writing part, I didn't write a full paragraph. I just wrote one sentence on each of the questions. But I found the test to be extremely stressful and really uninteresting. I was not interested in any of the exam. They were the speaking part was asking me questions about um, musical notes, and they gave a whole lecture on musical notes, and I had to listen to that. And I I zoned out a couple times, and then for the the same went with the writing part. I was zoning out, and I, I couldn't concentrate, so I just went through it rather quickly. But I didn't pass this test, this sample test. So what does that tell us about TOEFL? There are a few problems about TOEFL that I'd like to talk about. First of all, I do question the test because it is computerized. The exam lacks that human interactive element. It's multiple choice and in many instances doesn't allow a lot of room for open-ended responses. The responses are limited to the instruction and only focuses on the test itself and not necessarily prior knowledge the testees may have acquired throughout their English studies in their lifetime. As I mentioned, I wasn't interested in the material. Secondly, I questioned the student-related reliability aspect of the exam. The day of the test, the students are going to be quite anxious and nervous. Do we, can we expect them to give an, a, an, a sample of their lifelong study of the English language in a stressful environment? Additionally, scholars argue that tests, tests such as TOEFL don't relate to some cultures and general background of ESL and EFL students. One of the questions I experienced regarded Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. Can an EFL student find relationship to Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, which is an American culture element? An example of tests not relating to cultures is Momad's 2014 study, which found that many problems Indonesian students had was with the context of exams such as TOEFL. Um, some of these problems were because of the student's age or even social, social status. Moreover, Arafudin 2014 found that the role of gender can even have some aspect on uh, conflicts relating to con contextual questions in measurement tests such as TOEFL. Some questions that remain are reflective of Brown's 2010's questions on the reason, the reasons why tests are given. One of the questions Brown's ask is, is the language of the exam natural? I found some words that I use in my everyday life on the sample test provided by TestN, and probably about 60% of the words which I hardly use, and some that I forgot, which I didn't remember until I read them in the context of, of the test. Um, are items contextualized? Um, in the speaking portion, the exam went from musical notes and then to Huckleberry Finn. 
are topics meaningful and relevant? In my case, I was completely bored, as I mentioned throughout the test. I didn't have an interest in a lot of the topics that were uh, given in order to, to test my knowledge of English. Um, my final question is, how can we expect students from international communities to take a test that may have little value or interest to their personal, cultural, or even gender backgrounds? Overall, I think there does need to be some type of guideline or system to measure one's English ability to study in a foreign country. Does the TOEFL exam do that effectively and efficient, efficiently? I really don't know. I'm not too sure. But I know it's all that we have at the moment until something better comes along.